Uh, what is it that the Jungian perspective brings to your work on, on race and on sexual diversity? Yeah, yeah. That's a great question because, you know, this work does tend to be pretty Eurocentric, uh, just given the, the roots of it. Uh, but also, uh, I believe this work gives a, a voice to the inner world that we all share, no matter what our thoughts of, about what our external or biological heritage is, that we all, you know, share in the fact that we, we have a conscience, uh, even if we don't have access to it at some points. We all have a sense of consciousness to some degree, and we all share a, a collective consciousness, and as well as an unconscious and a collective unconscious. And so um, I think some of the dynamics that I've seen play out socially, when, when I was um, introduced to the language of the personal and collective unconscious, it's explained a lot in the shadow, you know, the personal and the collective shadows. Mm -hmm. um, that really opened up this work and, and really gave me language to talk about experience that just wasn't there before. Well, you in fact, you've uh, spearheaded a number of events related to community healing, and uh, you did work in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, and Oxford, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so a colleague of mine, Dr. Jandel Crutchfield, she's an African-American female, and uh, she and I, you know, during, during our days, I also teach at the University of Mississippi. So we were colleagues teaching there. And at any given point, there was just a wall between us physically. Um, you know, our offices were next door to one another, our classrooms were next door to one another. And so at any given time, the only thing that was physically between us was a wall, but we never really connected relationally. And there came a time where we were both engaged in a conversation that drew out a, a mutual passion around privilege and race and racial violence and police brutality where we connected and we started talking about the shared passion. And so in Tupelo, there was a, an incident where there was a, a white police officer that shot and killed an unarmed black man. And this was during the bloody summer where this was, you know, the conversations around this were being raised uh, because it was happening in so many places around the country and, and being yeah. called the video and talked about in the media. So we decided to, to have a town hall to discuss this. And, uh, you know, it's this grassroots, five people could have shown up, but we had over 200 people show up. My goodness, how was it uh, publicized? Was there a flyer? What did the flyer say that drew people? We use people? social media a lot, and we use local media, uh, newspapers and television stations. And we even had interest, you know, come from Memphis, which is a couple hours away, but it, it really, the fact that someone was doing something uh, really generated a lot of interest. And, and we quickly found out that there's a lot of people who have a lot of thoughts and feelings and passions, but don't know where to put it or how to connect. So this gave yeah. all of us an opportunity to come together. Well, what did people think they were coming to? Uh, we build it as uh, together to below, which just means coming together to talk about what's going on. It was almost mm -hmm. like a, a a family powwow, if you will, for the community. Um, so we came together. And, and, and both races uh, came? Absolutely, and it's multi-generational. And so we started out, one thing I like to do when we start out conversations like this is break through the denial that's sometimes there, especially for those of us who are not marginalized uh, or haven't had that experience. And so what I started out with was the words from the Apollo mission. In Houston, we have a problem. You know, and so if you look at the transcripts, <laughs> if you look at the transcripts yeah. of, uh, of that conversation, it is Houston, we are having a problem out here. So the people on the margins, the people that were in the most danger, the furthest from home or home base or safety were saying, hey, there's a problem out here. And of course, the people at Mission Control are going to say, okay, I believe you. Let's talk about this instead of, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> you know, sometimes, which sometimes is the is the response when uh, yeah. uh, when there's issues of diversity. Sometimes the majority is quick to say, "That's not really a problem. Get over it. Work through it." 